What's up guys? Welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. My name is Tiffany and I raise silver fox and creme d'argent rabbits for meat and show. I am going to show you today how I built this awesome indoor rabbit hutch. If you like content like this, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. But with that, let's go ahead and begin the video. interesting lighting situation because my garage light isn't working right now but uh, we will be building a new six bay indoor rabbit hutch this rabbit hutch is going to help me expand my show rabbits so they are protected from sun bleaching and elements and it's just gonna be overall easier for me to be able to load my show rabbits into the car with them being in the garage so close to the car. <laughs> like most of my builds, it's going to be a hutch frame. So what that means is that I am building the frame and I've bought modular cages to fit within the frame. So in the frame, we will be putting the six cages and then they will be having trays underneath of them. They will be hanging in the frame. And this just helps me to ensure that my rabbits are the cleanest and healthiest that they possibly can be. Wire bottom flooring is is a great option for rabbits when you choose the thick gauge wire. Oftentimes I hear people say that rabbits get sore hocks from wire and it's just not the case, especially if you choose a very thick gauge wire like 14 or 16 gauge wire, which is what we have. We have nice thick 14 gauge wire and I have never had a case of sore hocks because of this wire. So right now I have all of my pieces painted and I need to cut all of the pieces. I will have a blog post that goes along with this video just in case you guys want to make a similar hutch like this. Um, we're also gonna be putting casters on this cage, so that's very cool. It's gonna be able to roll in and out of the garage uh, for easy cleaning or whatever we need to do to it. But yeah, right now we just need to cut a whole bunch of pieces and I will have all of the dimensions and whatnot in that blog post if you guys want to follow along and do this with me. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to cutting. So we have all of our pieces cut now. Let me see if I can get these dimensions right. If they are not, I will make sure to correct them on the screen. But we have 600 inch long pieces of two by four. We have 63 inch, four of them pieces of two by four. We have 12 of the two by twos. These are 27 inches and we have eight of the 30 inch two by four pieces. There was very minimal waste with all of this lumber. Um, here's some of my scraps here. We have this leftover piece of two by four, and then we have this leftover right here. So overall, we hardly wasted any lumber. I'm very happy with that. And I feel like these pieces right here are long enough for me to repurpose for something. So. Yeah, so now essentially what I have to do is I have to create the different level like framework, I guess you could say. Um, and after I complete all three of those, three meaning uh, the bottom row, the top row and the roof, um, which I guess is not really a roof because it's not gonna be outside, but you get, you get what I mean. I have to complete the framework for each of those and then after we're done with that, we will attach it to the legs and we'll also be putting those casters on those legs. So let's get busy. Thank you. 
have my two inner frames done. The trays are gonna be sitting on these. And I was just assembling the top when I realized that I actually did make an error in my calculations. <laughs> so instead of having eight of the 30 inch two by fours, I actually on only needed six that were 30 inches. And then the two others uh, actually need to be 27 inches like we cut the two by two so they can fit in the top piece here and uh, support that, if that makes any sense. So I actually need to cut uh, both of these right here, these shorter pieces, I actually need to cut them down to 27 inches and then we'll have a lot of support on the roof there. So I'm looking at this and I know like these are the legs, right? So I have to somehow assemble this together I think it'll be easy, <laughs> hopefully it will be, but yeah, we will see. to show you the casters really quick. So here's the casters I got, they're four inch casters. And all I'm doing essentially is just drilling some holes in the bottom of the hutch here and placing these in those holes. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's how we did the quail hutch. I don't think that's technically the correct way to do this, but it's been working for us. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I mean, if we ever need to remove them, they'll be super easy to remove. Here's one that I already put on. So they're just swivel casters and they will allow us to move the hutch from point A to point B, hopefully pretty easily. So I'm gonna get the rest of these on and then flip this thing. Oh, look at it. It looks so good. I'm like really happy with it. So we're gonna be hanging cages on these top boards and this one for the bottom row. And then trays will be sliding in on each of those levels, which is why we had to put all of those two by twos in there so something could hold the trays up. So again, sorry for the bad lighting in here, you guys. Just decided to rain today, but I needed to put this together, so you'll have to bear with me. I actually ended up getting sick like almost the day, a day or two after building that <laughs> and I had to stop and then of course we had Thanksgiving and we had um, we have two Thanksgivings in a row because we have it with my family and then we have it with Jameson's family the next day so uh, I have taken a hiatus <laughs> but as you can see we do have three of the cages up uh, I kind of needed to do that very quickly because I was definitely running out of room put rabbits because that happens here quite a lot. <laughs> so I didn't film um, putting those cages up or trays in or anything because it was very cold and I actually did it when it was dark outside so you probably wouldn't have been able to see anything anyway. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you guys how I put the cages in. So here's another view of what it is currently looking like. It looks really good. I'm happy with it. The trays do sit in there really well. So as you can see, I have the cages suspended with hooks. It's like that in the front and in the back. And I wanted this to be really stable because a lot of the times when I see people hanging cages, they're still really loose. And I've had cages like that before and I don't like it. So when I put these in, I made sure that it was extremely stable. These cages don't move one bit. So I'm very happy with that. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that on the bottom row because we obviously have three more cages that we need to put in here. 
this project is cursed for me. I don't know why. Um, right after I told you guys I have to finish hanging the cages, which I went ahead and assembled all of the cages, so that's all done now. But right after I told you that I needed to hang the cages, I realized that I was out of hooks. <laughs> So then I went to Lowe's uh, later on in the day because I didn't have the car at that point. Got my hooks and then I came back and realized that they are too small. They should be this big, but they're this big. Um, I think I can make it work with the small hooks. I'm just bummed out because <laughs> I wanted to use these bigger ones, but I guess I can always replace them if I wanted to. It's just like this project for some reason today does not want to cooperate with me, but I really, really want this to be done. <laughs> so we are going to get it done and uh, I'm going to show you an easy way how to screw these hooks in. It's actually really, really simple. So I just have to measure about four and a half inches in right here. I'm just gonna use my screw here to kind of poke a hole so I know exactly where it needs to go, right there. And then I am going to drill my screw in just a little bit. And I'm doing this on the very edge. I don't want it in the middle, I want it on the very edge, otherwise the cages, they won't sit in them properly. So I just screw in a little bit. Now I got my starter hole to put my hook into. So here is my hook. This is what they look like. I will link the appropriate size hook in the description below. So basically you can take your hook and you can start twisting it in. So once you get to a certain point, it gets really difficult to screw that in anymore, but I want it to be like almost all the way in. So what I did is I have one of these screws with an eyelet on the end of it. I'm just going to put this in my drill bit here, like this, tighten it up. So now my drill bit looks like this. And then I'm gonna hook it around like that and twist it in. Let the drill do the work for me. All the way up there. And that is how you easily twist in a hook. So now I just have to do the rest of them. <laughs> which is quite a lot actually. So I'm gonna do the rest of these and then I'm going to hang my cages, finally, because I need this to be done. <laughs> I hate it when projects draw out longer than I want them to. rabbit hutch is finally done. I'm so happy that it's finally done and I actually already have it filled <laughs> with rabbits. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take the camera and show you guys some of the features of this rabbit hutch. Um, I am using trays. I'm using 30 by 30 cages. There's six of them hanging within the hutch. There's LEDs, there's casters. I'm really happy with it. I think that you guys are gonna think it's really cool. So if you have like a barn or a garage that you kind of wanna put rabbits in but you're not really sure how to make a structure, that would be good for that. I think this would be really, really cool for you. So as most of you know, I really love having matching bowls. And right now we don't have a lot of matching bowls because, um, well, I'm running out. <laughs> so I'll be getting new bowls and new J-Peters here pretty soon just so I can have everything be matching like I usually do because that's just how I do things. So just like my outdoor hutch, these are KW cages. I swear by these cages, you guys. It does take a long time for them to get to you sometimes. Uh, like, it can take a month or two. But honestly, these cages are the best quality cages I've ever found. You just push this to open the doors up and then it opens out like this. One of the reasons that I love KW cages so much is that they give you the option to upgrade your flooring. And I always go with this HD 14 gauge wire. It is very, very thick. I've never had a case of sore hawks on it. 
um, and I highly recommend going with a thick gauge wire like this. It is, it's just very comfortable for the rabbits to lay on, and honestly, they, they typically prefer laying on this wire to anything else that you put in the cage with them. Um, so it is very comfortable, it's very thick, um, it's the best wire in my opinion that you can go with. A lot of people wanted to know my two cents on trays, and I'm not foreign to using trays. I actually use trays for most of my rabbits growing up, so I don't mind them. Um, they are a little bit of extra work, especially if you want to keep the smell down as much as possible. I like to empty these trays every one to two weeks, and when I do clean the trays out, I put these pine pellets in there. These are hard pine pellets that you can buy at Tractor Supply. They honestly, they smell really good to me and they are super absorbent and they really help in keeping the smell down. So I highly recommend using pine pellets over something like pine shavings. There's plenty of room. There's a couple of inches here between the cage and the trays. So I have no issue at all sliding these trays in. That was one thing that I wanted to make sure that I had lots of room. Uh, underneath the cages to put the trays. One thing I want to quickly touch on is the casters. Now I really love having the casters on here. I think they are awesome. I think they're going to be so helpful, but I think in the blog post guys, I'm actually going to recommend a different type of caster. Just because of how heavy this entire structure is, I think that the casters could use a little bit more support. So the ones that I'm going to recommend to you guys are the ones that screw into four places on the leg and you might have to do a little bit of modifying for that, but these ones, they just go up into a hole underneath in the two by four, and uh, it is a little bit iffy to me, honestly. I'm probably gonna have to redo at least a little bit the way my casters are done. They're just a little bit crooked, so we're probably gonna have to modify that a little bit, but overall, it's not a big deal. Um, I just am gonna recommend you guys to get the ones that screw in in four places instead. And as you guys know, I love to play with LEDs. I love to add LEDs to almost any structure that I make for my animals. And honestly, I just think it helps with their mood. I mean, they're, they're such a warm light. I, I really feel like it helps with the rabbits to keep them happy and give them more daylight time, especially now that it is becoming darker sooner and we're about to go on to the shortest day of the entire year so the leds really help my rabbits to be able to give them more light throughout the day it also helps me to kind of see what i'm doing when i'm taking care of them so i just really love having the leds in there the cages that i am using in this structure are all 30 by 30 cages this is a good size for your six class meat rabbits like silver foxes chrome de argents californians new zealands any rabbit that's around 10 pounds when it's fully grown uh 10 to 12 pounds i think that this is a good size um, for my does out in the main hutch they are in 30 by 36 cages just that extra six inches really helps them out when i put the nest box in and whatnot but these cages are mainly meant for show rabbits so uh the rabbits are mainly going to be in single cages each but they do have neighbors so they are never lonely and i just think it's a good cage size for show rabbits I have placed plastic underneath the hutch and honestly I really need to put some plastic like behind the hutch too but if you guys are having a hutch structure inside an area like a garage or something and you don't want urine to soak into the concrete I would really recommend putting some plastic down and you can just get this plastic around the insulation section in Lowe's it just usually comes in a big roll and I get six mil um, I think it's a nice thickness. That's also what I use to kind of winterize my outdoor rabbit hutch. So uh, I would just recommend buying a big old roll of six mil. And honestly, it comes in handy in so many more ways than you would think it does. It's under my quail hutch as well. And it just keeps the floor from absorbing any of the nasty <laughs> that might fall. Um, underneath your rabbits. Well guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something new. I hope that this was helpful to you in some way. If you did like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. I do try to put out a video at least once every two weeks. My schedule's been kind of messed up within the last month or so, but I do love to post videos. I do include rabbits on most of my videos. Um, it's just, it's something that we do here. We do have new merch. We have new sweatshirts, new kind of logo that I put on my sweatshirts for my rabbits. So if you guys want to support the channel in that way, I would love if you go to my website and purchase one of these sweatshirts. You can also support me on Ko-Fi and buy me a coffee. It's just a nice, fun little way to uh, kind of give me a tip if you enjoy the content. It's just kind of giving me a tip for 
providing these free plans and providing these videos and I really truly greatly appreciate it so you guys are awesome and I hope that you enjoyed this video and with that I will see you guys in the next one bye guys Bye.